let's discuss the structure of a neuron. As you all know, neurons come in all shapes and sizes. But all neurons share certain basic structural features. Let's consider a typical neuron as an example. It has a cell body, a soma or the pericarion, dendrites and axons which have the collaterals and the branches, axon terminals or telodendria are present and synaptic knobs can be seen. Neurons exhibit a great variability in their size. Cell bodies can range from 5 to 100 micrometer in diameter and shapes. Their surface areas are extensive because most neurons display numerous narrow branch cell processes. They usually have a rounded or polygonal cell body, the pericarion or soma. I think you can actually make this out from the diagram which is being displayed here. This is a central mass of cytoplasm which encloses a nucleus and gives off long branched extensions with which most intercellular contacts are made. Typically one of these processes is the axon which is much longer than the others, the dendrites. Dendrites conduct electrical signals towards the soma whereas axons conduct impulses away from it. So we have the cell body here, we have the small dendrites uh, around the cell body and then there is a long axon going away from the cell body, impulses, dendrites conduct impulses towards the cell body and axons away from it. The neurons have cytoplasm that contains the nucleus and the nucleolus. The cytoplasm is rich in RNA which are called as nizzle granules. Now you have to understand certain facts about the neurons. That is, during the life of the neurons they do not multiply. But there is a steady depletion of the neurons. And the reason for the normal death of the neuron is the aging pigment called lipofusion. Neurons can be classified based on the structure and function. According to the structural classification, this is done depending on the number of processes that is extending from the cell body. As you can see in the image that is being displayed here, we have the unipolar neuron which has a single process. Then we have the pseudo unipolar neurons. It looks like we have two processes but actually it is a single uh, process that is happening. Bipolar neurons which have two actual processes and the multipolar neurons have three or more processes. The unipolar neurons have only one process that is axon which are usually absent in the humans. Pseudo unipolar neurons have one process which is actually splitting into two. The best example will be that of the dorsal root ganglion to the spinal nerve. Bipolar neurons have two processes, one will be the dendrite, the other will be the axon. The best example will be the bipolar neuron inside the retina of the eye. And multipolar neuron which has many dendrite and a single axon with telodendria. The example for this will be the multipolar neuron inside the motor cortex. Now let us classify the neurons according to its function. According to the function they are divided into three. One is the sensory afferent neurons, motor efferent neurons and interneurons. In case of the sensory afferent neurons, the impulses are carried from the receptor to the central nervous system. In motor efferent neurons, the impulses travel from the central nervous system to the effector organs. Whereas the interneurons are otherwise called as the association neurons. They facilitate the communication between the sensory and the motor neurons. As we have discussed right now, just view the animation video for a better understanding. Here the sensory neurons carry impulses from the receptor in muscle to the spinal cord. You can actually see the impulses that is being transmitted from the muscle to the spinal cord. And then we have the motor neurons which carry the impulses from the spinal cord to the neuromuscular junction inside the muscle. And you can see the muscle twitch. I hope you can appreciate the muscle twitch that is happening. In case of the interneuron, this will help for the coordination or the facilitation of the impulses between the motor and the sensory neuron as in case of the withdrawal reflex. Depending on the relative lengths of the axons and dendrites, the neurons are classified into Golgi type 1 and Golgi type 2. I think you can actually visualize that in the image that is being displayed here. In the Golgi type 1, this has the long axon and the short dendrite. And the example will be the pyramidal neurons. And in Golgi type 2, has a short axon and the long dendrite. Example is the Purkinje cells. Kindly appreciate the dendritic tree that is present on the Purkinje cells. Dear students, now we shall see the glial cells. Glial cells are also called as neuroglia. They occur both the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. They are actually smaller than the neurons and are capable of mitosis. That means they can divide. They do not transmit any nerve impulses but they do have some specialized functions like they physically protect the neurons, they help nourish the neurons, also they provide a supporting framework for all the nervous tissue. 
they actually far outnumber that of the neurons, accounting for about half the volume of the nervous system. I think you can actually understand that and make this out from the diagram that is being displayed here.